Hey coaches, welcome back to Football Talk with Coach Chip. I'm going to take a look back today, a look back to the old BYU trap draw. I was reading something a week or two ago on the social media stuff and somebody had, had mentioned it. And, you know, these guys were probably as responsible for the air raid as Mummy and Leach were because they based so much of what they did evolved from the BYU offense of the 70s and 80s. But they, one of their best running plays was the trap draw. And uh, at the time, back in the 80s when they were watching it, I was clueless to what I was seeing. And, you know, I went back and I found a bunch of uh, ball games at, from the 84 and 85. And I believe it was 84 when they won the national title, the only non-Power 5 conference representative to win a national title, I believe, in the last 50 years or so, only one I can remember. They had such guys as Robbie Bosco and uh, – Hey Mooley was their running back. He's on the all name team of all time. Has to be Hey Mooley. And uh, by Sikahima was returning kicks for them. There's some blast from the past for some of you old heads like me. But uh, some of the announcers on these old videos I found, some would call it a draw, some would call it a trap. And I don't remember what my reaction to it was when I was watching it on TV. We used to stay up late. I was BYU football was a must see thing at about 10 or 11 o'clock over here on the east coast and uh i was just enjoying watching somebody chunk it all over the yard it was cool man but before we get started and i'm going to show you a couple of diagrams and remember i was never there i just watched it and i tried to discern what maybe their blocking rules or responsibilities were from watching a ton i've got several clips i'm going to show you in just a little bit and you can see what I'm talking about. Their terminology, I'm not sure what it was. I don't know if they were running trap and just pass setting to draw the defensive line upfield to destroy their, you know, their reads, their techniques. Oh, it's a pass, and they haul butt up the field. Or if they were calling a draw and then tagging the trap. I don't know, but I believe I figured out at least their responsibilities. I put the blocking rules kind of in my words. Before we get started, Looking at this, looking at some diagrams and some videos, remember to subscribe, like the video, and share it with all your friends, especially your coaching buddies. All right, let's get started. All right, and again, you know, if anybody knows exactly what they were doing, you know, don't, don't fuss at me too bad. This was kind of like me going back in the time machine uh, 40 years ago and trying to discern it using my terminology, what they were doing. But it looked to me like they were pass blocking on the uh, on the backside and then pass setting on the front side, almost like a screen, pass set, you know, punch, throw, go, for those of y'all that have seen my screen videos, and then releasing down the field. And they were trapping the first D lineman. And you'll see on the clips, sometimes they – uh. They trapped the three tech, and sometimes they trapped the four or the five or the four I. And it was a couple of times it looked like there was a guy to head up the guard and the two, and the guard passed that. And if the guy went outside to the B gap right here, he let him go, and then he went to backer. And if the guy went inside, he took him. And then the, the pulling guard would come and kick the first thing he would see. You know, that's the best blocking, that's the best rule for a trapper is uh, not telling them who to trap, just telling them they've got first man past a certain point. They're going to kick or trap the first man past a certain point. But you're going to see, and these ends are just running up the field in the, all the clips. And the teams that were successful against it, and i show you some where they got hit in the mouth, looked to me like their linebackers were hanging out. Well, that tells me then you're not dropping people into – dropping backers into coverage. And again, this I this is something that I was sharing it with a friend of mine, and they said, "Hey, man, you ought to put that in." I said, "Well, I can figure out a way to do it without spending a ton of time teaching it and doing it for just one play." And those of y'all that have been following the channel now for a few years know that you know, I'm not going to put in a new blocking scheme for one play. I want to be able to use that blocking scheme for multiple plays, and it just seems to me that this one is kind of uh, specific to this trap draw. 
Let's look at another one. This is against like a 4-2, 4-3 kind of front. And you're going to see they're under center. And we're going to uh, – and I put them in gun and because most of y'all are running gun stuff now. And you can see on the video they're under center. That was the big thing that Mummy and Leach did. They took the BYU principles uh, and moved them back into a gun formation. Now, here it is to the left. And you can see on this one, they're going to trap the three-tech. And I put the guy that's getting trapped in blue on all these diagrams. Again, look, he's pass setting. Pass setting here the guard. Pass setting here the tackle. Sometimes this guy stayed in and blocked the tight end. And sometimes he'd release out. They're going to pass set, invite this dude up the field. Pass set, invite this dude up the field, and then release to backer. So it's almost like a, a, a jailbreak on the left side. You can get those guys to run up field, and then you're going to get those backers, and you are outnumbering them. And even if you don't make great blocks, if you just get in the way of these backers, you're going to have a good play. If you've got a running back that's any good and, and can make people miss. Like, hey, Mooley, was, he, was, he was pretty cockeyed good. For you young guys, I think you're going to find this trip down memory lane pretty fascinating too. And you'll notice – they kind of uh, verified what I've been saying for years. A guy outside the kick, outside the trap, doesn't matter. When they're trapping the three tech as he runs upfield, they're not trapping. I mean, they're not blocking the D end outside of him. They just don't do it because he's running up the field. They're kicking this guy and they're coming underneath. It's good stuff. And notice here on the backside, he's going to pass set and high wall. He's going to run this end up the field. And then the backside guard, of course, is going to pull kick. And again, it's just a fascinating play, and I thought it'd be cool to break it down. All right, here it is again. This is verse, because I knew somebody, I've get, been getting a lot of messages, either in the comments below, and I'm, all positive stuff, just asking questions. But I'll get emails, I'll get messages on the social media accounts, and I'll get comments in the comments section, or questions in the comments section, asking, how would you block that against a tight front? So apparently a lot of y'all are seeing tight fronts, and you'll see that uh, when they played Pitt, and you know, Pitt hit him in the head pretty good with it, they ran like a tight front. You know, that was back in the 80s. People were still running a 5-2. And it was before we started calling them 3-4s. And we always called them 5-2s in the 70s and early 80s. It was sometime, I think, in the late 80s. They, the NFL started calling it a 3-4. And then that trickled down to college and, and high school. Now everybody calls a 5-2 or 3-4. And they are different. You know, they are different. But you'll see on the film with Pitt, Chris Dolman, who was Hall of Famer with the Vikings, God rest his soul, is playing this defensive end, stand-up end, outside backer, whatever you want to call him. And to give you an idea why I say stand-up defensive end, after a few years in the NFL, they put his hand in the ground and made him sure enough DN. All right, let's look at some, uh, let's look at some video. All right, don't forget, subscribe, like, and share the channel. And also, you can hit me up at siegel.chip at gmail.com. You'll see it down below. I put it up on the screen for you. And uh, look at our uh, our freebies that we give away. We got a ton of them. I'm not going to put that card up on this video because this is more of just a fun video for me. They're all fun, but this one's just, you know, it, it's an uh, indulgence, if you will. And forgive the graininess of some of it. It's old. It's an old video. Now, this is, of course, this was in Miami, was show enough Miami, y'all. All right, this is in the 80s. And I think this is before Jimmy Johnson. Or maybe, right, that was before Jimmy Johnson, I believe. This may be, uh, or maybe the first year of Jimmy Johnson when he comes in with his Miami, what came known as the Miami 4 3. See, they did not block the DN at the top. Watch. Pass set, let him go, release to the linebacker. That's good stuff, cuz. Let's slow it down. And what made it super effective, they would do it on passing downs, and they were a pass-crazy team. Uh, you know, like I said, a lot of people like me loved watching BYU just because it was different. And um, for football fans, they were kind of must-watch TV there for a while. And then everybody starts throwing it. Now, notice they're kicking the three. They're going to trap the three, run underneath him right here. 
and they're leaving the D in, I know it's blurry at the top, unblocked. It's letting him run himself up the field. And then on the back side, this, the tight end is going to stay in and get this cat, and then the tackle is going to stay in and get this cat. And the center just invited the nose to go to his right, and he took it. Some of these are a little bit better. There it is again. Of course, they're all the trap draw. And see, that time they're kicking the D in. Because he's the first man past that guard. Now, this is what I love. Notice they got a rump line on a draw because it's a trap. Look at this right here. They got a rump line. Oh, he missed him. Hey, Muley. See, it just looks like BYU's O-line's getting their butt kicked, but they're not. If you do that on passing downs, you're going to get people to run up the field and you're going to get linebacker. Now here, the Pitt got gashed a couple of times, but Pitt did a good job of it. This was the year Pitt was ranked number three in the preseason polls. I went back and looked it up. It was their first losing season since 1972. Um, they ended up going like three and seven, I think. See right here, the tackle, pass sets, and kind of like a screen, he pass sets, slows the guy down a tad, sells him on pass, and then releases him, and here comes the kicker. And didn't even need to block him. I mean, he just ran himself up the field. And I'm not saying the defense was wrong, because they're reacting. You know, that's the secret to good offensive football to me, is when you can use the defense's technique against them. All right, another pit. I noticed that on some of the – I went through a ton of them. Some of the games they used more of it. You'll see later a lot of Michigan, and that what turned out to be the national championship game for BYU when they won the Holiday Bowl against Michigan. And I think it's the only time in my lifetime the national championship bowl game was played before Christmas. A few times it was New Year's Eve. Usually it was New Year's Day or January 2nd. Notice that right here. Again, here's the side there. See the, the pulling guard? He pass sets, sells the pass. One, two, and he's gone. He misses. He got there before the, the D lineman did, but the D lineman had run himself up the field. You know, one of these, Chris, Chris Dolman is going to, I mean, he knocks that guy for a loop. But I told you, Pitt did a really good job of defending it. This game, I went back and looked, it was 20 to 14, BYU won. BYU had a lot of close games that year. They played a pretty tough schedule out of conference. You know, the WAC back then wasn't extremely strong, but they, they played some out of conference. And they knew – Pitt was going to be good. Pitt had been good since 72. This was right after Jackie Sherrill had left. There it is. Man. That is a big man playing linebacker. Stand up DN. He did not buy. And it, it's the first game of the season. And so I pit either made an adjustment or just knew they were going to run a lot of it because they did a good job against the trap draw. And that's an example. Well, it was to the right, and they made him go back to the left. He won't go back to the left again. All right, here's Michigan in the Holiday Bowl. This is when they ended up capping this, their perfect 12-0 season. That's right, young guys. They used to play 11 games before they went to 12. So guard, pass set, 
and then nobody there to kick, so he turns up, and it kind of turns into a sweep, which is what you do on a trap like that. When nobody's there to trap, you turn up. Good one right here. Is it a trap? Is it a draw? It's the trap draw. See, the tackle had to wait for the linebacker because the linebacker is dropping into pass coverage. Boom, get a good bang right there. Come on back. Yeah, we're running it. There I am to get you. And this was a tight ball game too. Another one where he turned it up. See, they had to have rules because look at what uh, Michigan did a good job game planning and scheming for them. They got linebackers walked up on the previous clip. They did it too. Without blocking rules, this kind of defense will give you fits. You cannot cat block. I got that cat. You got that cat. Pretty much just letting Michigan's front go where they want to go and just take, a, take them with them and then kicking that first man past the guard. This is a very good football play. If nothing else, it shows you the value of a draw, which I think with screens, bit world being screen crazy, coaching world, draws aren't as big as they once were. All right, that's back to the top. All right, coaches, I hope you enjoyed this little trip down memory lane and me trying to figure out how they were blocking it. You know, you could look at it and see how they were blocking it, but how they were blocking it, I'm doing air quotes, you know, the rules, you know, what was the method to their madness. But Lavelle Edwards, it, God rest his soul, in my opinion, is underrated. Uh, you know, they say, oh, he played in the WAC and he only won that one title and they shouldn't have won that one. They were the only undefeated team. He played his schedule. But you go back and watch them and you tell me that man was not a good football coach. Doug Scoville, who was uh, – he was not the OC at the time. By then it was Chow. But this is Scoville's offense. Scoville's the one. He left in 80, 81 to become the head coach at San Diego State. But he designed this offense in the 70s that eventually, you know, had the great impact on Mummy and Leach and the air raid system that is so prevalent today in all levels of football. You Next time you line up, if you're, in, if you're using air raid principles, look up and say, thank you, Coach Edwards. And these guys, this is where the offense came from, and this was one of their key components uh, to protect their passing game. They ran this trap draw. Hey, hit me up at Siegel.chip at gmail.com. I'm at Chip Siegel on Twitter slash X, and uh, let's keep the conversation going. I, I've enjoyed doing this for the last four years, and I'm going to keep doing it as much as I can, especially during the off season. Uh you know, those of y'all that have been following me know that once the season hits, I, I kind of disappear. And you got to, if you want to watch them, you're going to watch the ones I've already made. But I try to do one a week uh, during the off season, sometimes two. I think I did two last week, and I, and I may skip a week after that. But I thank you for watching. Those of you that subscribe, thank you for subscribing. If you're not subscribing, what ails you? It doesn't cost you anything. Uh, this and how do you, this is how you keep the content free. It's not behind a paywall. I just do it because I love to do it. And I want to help coaches. I want to help kids be as good as they can be. Hey, until next time, y'all, be elite.